to this conference, which is uh, called Ruby Midwest. I am Australian, so uh, I, I now live in San Francisco, so I looked at the map and I thought, this is going to be awesome. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Ruby Midwest? Of course. That's just up the road. <laughs> that would be sweet. I'm sick and tired of traveling from country to country. Um, and I got that wrong, so I thought, no, okay, so how do I do this Midwest business? So this is the middle of the West. <laughs> uh, I was pretty lost by now. Uh, so I, I ag in my agile fashion of what's next, I looked briefly at the invite and I said I was in Kansas. Um, little Kansas City. Uh, in Missouri. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it's taken me a while to get here. And um, so at some point I, I had to ask the question, how this possibly is called the Midwest? <laughs> so for me it's been an actual safari. <laughs> <laughs> You're already thinking there can't possibly be more memes in this. Oh yes, there can. <laughs> and that's how. <laughs> so okay, so um, here we are uh, at a conference, and it's now 2011. So unlike a lot of us, when we first learned Ruby, um, we all came to the first uh, like the first Rails conf, and that was like, who's making money from Ruby and Rails? And there's very few people, but now. Oh, we all do, and as projects, they have money, and we have to make decisions on how to spend that money. Uh, you might never think of it like that, but trust me, your boss does. Um, and uh, your boss is thinking in this fashion. He's thinking, I could spend the money on features, or I could spend it on, on sort of you know, the other aspect of the uh, performance aspects. Now, if you want to add resources, you want to get more performance, you want your app to hum, you can press in App Cloud the Add button, uh, which is a tremendous button, and when you do that, uh, cost you money. Uh, my, my manager's not too thrilled for me to make that very distinct uh, association. Uh, press it some more times and it cost you more money, just in case you're wondering. And, uh, but nonetheless, so you were probably wondering, well, this is certainly this is how I think. There's still, a, there's still a university student in me that wants free beer uh, and certainly free internet and free performance. So uh, I was always very interested in how, you know, for as much little as much money, as little money as possible, I can get good performance. So this is kind of in the back of my mind, constantly. And so I work at Engine Yard now, and, and I, a lot of people, you know, they've been doing the event machine, doing other things and performance and threading or whatever. So I, um, I was getting a little bit sick and tired of all these random conversations on Twitter that are interesting to follow, but sort of hard to get to the guts of. So what I did was I organized a very last minute uh, EM RubyConf which could have been called Concurrency Conf, and, and uh, it was sort of the, the back end of Rails Conf, and it was really good. We flew some people in, we had some people do some, uh, some, some videos, prepared videos that they gave us, and uh, I think we had a packed room of 50 or something people. So, so, I've learned all these things, and I went and read some research papers. There's a way to spend some quality time. Um, and I thought, it's unfair if I do all this and I don't tell you about it. And I thought, well, I could, I could, I could do this one of two ways. I can tell it in such a way that I come out very clever, or I can do it in such a way that I come out very funny. And um, no more importantly, or I could give you just the answer. Like, you're here writing Ruby, it's great. What, what's the one thing I could do? Not what's the 50 things you could do under 50 different edge case circumstances. What's the one thing you could do? And so I want to give you the one thing. So we talked about adding resources. And whilst that's a thing you could do, uh, let's see what else we can do. And so the, the goal for me is I just want to write code. I don't want to be thinking. Like I love um, uh, James's talk because you know you just have one pattern for things. Wrap up, you know, try to have APIs that don't ship nils. Wrap up things that might ship nils, such a way they never ship nils, and then you never have to think about it. So you're just trying to lower the cost of thinking. And all I want to think about is my application. So I'm going to give you a solution, a plan, on how to think about this stuff. Should I use Evented? Should I use Threads? And how's my code fit in that? And here it is! <laughs> and um, if you forget to write this down, uh, I will show it about a half a dozen times more. <laughs> Keep an eye out for it. All right, now you think, well, that's great. Um, that, what does that mean? Well, here's some, here is the, the, the thing you should do next example. 
Like, this is the money shot. I think that's rude, actually. There's a better way of saying that. This is what you paid money for. <laughs> you know, it's great. You paid some money to come to this conference. Personally, I think this is worth, if you have not done doing this, I mean, think about how much money you spend running web, web apps specifically. A lot of what I'm talking about is web app focus because you get an interesting side effect of, uh, when it comes to threaded. But um, you're probably spending lots of money. You do this, you spend less money, it paid for the conference. And everyone else is free. Not that they weren't valuable. Actually, it's been really, really good. I've actually thoroughly enjoyed this conference. All right, so what is Evented? Evented is where you arrange I.O. Now, I would like to say orchestrate I.O. There's a cost to that. And it's going to have to have a smaller font. <laughs> and I'd rather have a bigger font and spend 30 seconds explaining it. I want it. Threads is where you're going to do actual work. That's an interesting premise. What that means is, you've invented, you can't do work. <laughs> so, um, if you're building any invented apps, whether in Ruby or that other thing that's very popular, um, you can't do work. And we'll talk about why. So, and what you want to do is write code. So here's the solution, just in case you forgot to write the notes down. Uh, here is the bits and pieces you're going to use for your app, and you're going to write code at the bottom. So, we want to use resources better. Let's talk about concurrency. This is how we're going to get, well, I use resource utilization. Now you might think, why would I, you know, I work in engine yard. I sell memory for a living. I mean, CPU, memory, you know, that's, we charge for it. It's good. Uh, good business. You should do it. And um, <laughs> specifically with me, not in competition. That would be no fun at all. Um, so this is, let's see how we can use our resources better. Let's compare that the two that are sort of similar. Um, and certainly in the Ruby space, we've all gone down the top one and we've not investigated, spent a lot of time uh, convincing ourselves about the second one. So let's talk about process concurrency. If you want to have one request at a time, that's going to take one process, and a Rails app might be between 50 and 150 meg. Um, memory's cheap until you have um, a need to scale up. Actually, there was a really good tweet the other day that sort of joked around this. Um, or was it? And memory's cheap until you double it every week. <laughs> Uh, that's it. So, 100 requests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do we think out loud? Um, all right, how do we, uh, all, the uh, concurrency is orchestrated by the kernel. A couple of example app stacks, Unicorn, Passenger, uh, Mongrel Cluster uh, is an example of, of how you get concurrency there. And threaded concurrency, which you might never have done. You get uh, one request is one thread. Now, how much overhead there is a thread? I just need a number. Um, you might say, well, it's probably 250k, but you, know, you start getting a lot of reuses. And it's a number that's substantially smaller in the reality. Uh, so, 100, so 100 requests is still just the cost of one process. That's pretty cool. What that means is that you're, re you're, you're sort of bound not by memory anymore, really. You understand this is you're going to be bound by something else like CPU. Um, and uh, so now you get to you know, grow a lot and, and, and use your, your uh, CPUs a lot better. All right, uh, we'll come back to Mongrel. So, summary, one request is cheap. Take notes. <laughs> In case you're not following the logic. It's very simple logic, just a lot of hand gestures. And uh, here is a um, very dodgy uh, image that I took from Google Images. Uh, when you search for winner, I guess, I can't remember now. Um, but it looked really... <laughs> Look <laughs> cheap and nasty, and I thought that'll do. <laughs> so, um, so that's why threads. That's why threads instead of processes, because you get to, you know, the code reuse and all that sort of stuff is now um, you're not duplicating your memory footprint. You get to be bound by something else. Now, uh, educational lesson. Anyone speak uh, sign language? You know what's that stand for? WTF. WTF. <laughs> but in code, it's not rude. And uh, <laughs> what's interesting about this is that if you're going to swear, uh, you need a friend. Because it's got three fingers. And it's only got two. <laughs> I don't know how that's, I don't know how deaf people can, can do what they do with only two hands. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. so uh, we talked about mention Mongrel, and uh, who still runs an app under Mongrel? One. Okay, so two. So it's um, it's noteworthy why I didn't mention it, uh, let alone uh, talk about the concurrency. But I have something uh, I have something interesting to show you. Code there. 
proof. Uh, has thread got new in it? It's threaded. So anyway. <laughs> If you don't use it, what's the point? We'll come back to it. This is what, here is Dr. Nick's guide to is something thread concurrent potential -ness. Okay, so it needs a better name. And but the premise is if, if, uh, if everything's thread safe or has threading enabled, I just had a, that's a graph and a logo that's, that I took from somewhere. Um, and it says thread safety, but you get the gist. So Mongrel has threading as a, 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 a available. But in 2006, when Rails came out, uh, it was not thread safe because it just wasn't important. It's like, what's the point? Because Ruby is not thread safe, or it doesn't have threads. So uh, let's explore what happened over the last five years. In 2008, uh, Rails 2.2 came out, and it was the first thread safe Rails ever. Hooray! No one used it uh, for that, which is a bit sad. And uh, we'll talk about uh, how you use it. But what you have to do ever since 2008 is you add this somewhere. Yeah, production.rb in your environment. You do that, you've got threading. Booyah! <laughs> Budget time. You know, start asking for a raise. Look how much money I saved. Now, if you're in Sinatra and you're going to need to write this down, you need to add this line somewhere. <laughs> uh, the hash, very important. <laughs> Error message, not very relevant. Um, <laughs> so we're getting close. Rails and thread safe, uh, Sinatra, Ongar, all we good. So let's look at Ruby's. Um, 186 wasn't, uh, 187 wasn't, 192 came out last year. Uh, uh, it's got 90 threads. Woohoo! Yeah! I don't need to have this talk. Problem is, uh, and sad face, uh, can only run Ruby once at a time, which is an, an interesting interpretation of. of Native threads. Uh, and, and, and the special mechanism that they achieved this tremendous feature is called the guild, and uh, it has a sad face as part of its. Um, you know, and I like to call it the grumpy guild. So sadly, even in 2010, and, and as of 2011 with 193 that just came out, it's, it's exactly the same. Just not worth another slide. So here we are, threaded. Thread safe, but no threads. Sad face. Um, so you might think, well, what's the point? Okay, we, we had this conversation. Do we move on to Invented now? Is this why everyone's excited about Invented? No, people are excited about Invented for other reasons. So threads, we have them. In fact, Mac Ruby also has uh, Gilless and you know, has threads. So, um, <laughs> but how many people run Mac Ruby in production? Uh, I don't can, you know. So, but these two. So how do you get JRuby? That was pretty simple. And in fact, as of Rails 3.1, if you're in JRuby at the time you run Rails and you my app, uh, it will come ready to run in JRuby for the first time. And what that means is that your gem file has uh, this sort of thing in it. So they're the sort of bare basics that you need. And if you pick a different database adapter, it'll change to be appropriate. So that's very cool. Most super cool, as you can probably guess my enthusiasm by now, is that uh, we're all green. And Dr. Nick's maths of concurrency say that uh, we can use thread concurrency, which gives us this which means you save money and you, get, and you get the pay raise that I was suggesting. And if you don't get the pay raise, just come to me and we'll figure something out. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what that scheme is going to look like. It's going to be dodgy. <laughs> so how do I use JRuby and Rails? Uh, uh, a thing called Trinidad. This, this is what we use in production. And the reason we use it in production is because it's, it's really good in, in development mode because it has a little command line app and pretty much it looks like every other because um, JRuby isn't about Java, it's about a Ruby, a Ruby implementation which, and this is just a secret if you use JRuby, and this, you might, you might not care it's a feature, you can use it, you cannot use it it's just an option if you want you can use some Java code now I don't want to make you <laughs> but it's purely an option, by default it's disabled so, JRuby is about running Ruby. Hence, four of the five letters in the name are the word Ruby. Uh, an example app, purely pure letter. There's, uh, that's just our, um, the one we put up an app bar to run, and uh, it has JRuby sort of enabled. So, if you're running JRuby, that works. By default, uh, so if you run a development mode, for example, or if you have the thread safety thing commented out, uh, it uses um, essentially when it pulls it to when uh, it's basically a wrap around Tomcat. Tomcat has uh, five JRuby runtimes. That's, that's your process concurrency. 
put on thread safe mode, booyah! One JRuby and threads. And that was it. Woo! Hard day's done. Time for the bug. <laughs> no, we're not here um, because you'd, uh, you know, it's all shut. Um, in Kansas City, or if you wanted a coffee, for example, you have to wait till Monday. And <laughs> so, we get that. so it's all uh, just normal app code you're writing. You know, none of the, the mysteriousness of threading and thread safety because, uh, because it's a web app. So let's talk about that. You're saying, I'm scared of threads. Okay, you're not going to say that out loud. You're going to say something silly like, I don't like Java. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but see, web apps are sort of implicitly uh, thread safe. And so what I've written for you is Doc Nick's joy of concurrency. <laughs> a uh, very picturesque volume about concurrency. Uh, but fun, the summary is you store state somewhere else unless it's safe. And, uh, and that's pretty much, that's, if you do that, then you're thread safe. I mean, and, and web apps you do. You don't leave data lying around for the next request to come through. It's stateless. You put it in a database. You're doing it already! How easy was that? Whew! Another hard day's work. Come on to the pub. Um, you're thinking, so the next question you might ask, well, what about all my libraries? Uh, good question. So you go to Rails plugins and click on the little thread safety button. There are libraries that declare themselves thread safe. Easy peasy. Well, that was fun. Let's move on. All right, so you do that, you're going to use Trinidad, and, um, but in the back of your mind, you've, you've opted to come to this session. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing something else, I don't know. Um, and uh, you've come to hear about Event Machine. Uh, event is cool, threads are not, and I haven't even heard of that thing once. Let's talk about this. So what is Evented? Evented is basically, it's a, it's a loop. You've heard of loops. And it's uh, loops over things that uh, might be, might have some I.O. It says, do you have any I.O.? And if you do, uh, it does something with it. That's the point. And uh, remember, uh, and I, I decided for the sake of brevity to rip out every other slide about the event. It's just not that relevant. I mean, the point of this talk is that if you're asking the question, evented versus threaded, I answered it. And I'm not going to justify why. <laughs> you have work to do, you wrote a web app. So let's talk about one of the, the real cases in a web app where you're going to be doing um, uh, uh, sort of I.O. bound things. The request comes in and it might be uh, like a page cache or some sort of content cache for files, etc. You ask the question, if it's a miss, go to the web app. If it hits, well, let's move this to the, this, make this I.O. work. Okay, so it's outside our app. You may have seen this pattern before. I didn't make it up. I just put it on a pretty slide. Uh, this is evented work. Our real work is inside our threads, and we're going to do this with a thing called Nginx. It's pretty cool. Who uses Nginx? Who knows how to configure it? <laughs> That's the implicit part. Um, you know, if you're going to use it, it's great, and it's great for many reasons. There's a graph of goodness uh, that shows how much less memory it uses. Uh, as it gets lots of concurrency, and it, sorry, that was a uh, request per second. This one is its flat line memory, which is one of the great benefits of evented things. But when you start to think evented versus threaded, you're talking about optimization questions. And I challenge you that most aren't going to be solved with evented, they're going to be solved with threads. And if you do have some IO stuff, pull it out the front uh, or pull it out into separate parts. So, because I need to give you one point. Who really have so much time? And I'd rather tell funny jokes. Um, so, you put event stuff at the front, threads, and then your app. Uh, you want to get this, obviously, uh, amongst other places, us. Uh, if you want a, a job, we can come work with awesomeness and me. It's <laughs> <laughs> two vaguely distinct groups. <laughs> you should. And uh, to the goal, as always, I want you to be happy. Because I assume you're a lot like me, and you starved of happiness. It's a sad world, people occupying things. Uh, <laughs> the like committing suicide without leaving a note. I'm just going to stand over here. Why? <laughs> you wouldn't understand why. Um, there's a, how much time have I got to tell someone else a joke? That's worth it. So. <laughs> Uh, there's an uh, Irish comedian, uh, Ed Byrne, and he has this bit about um, 
Uh, so you, 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 you know, you're sitting with your, your girlfriend, your wife, and you're watching TV, and you just say something stupid, something you know that only a man would say, like, "Yes, that's right. Women should be locked up in the kitchen." Something really well thought out like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then she, you know, all of a sudden the, the changes, but you don't know why. You know, she's looking at you differently. The vibe is different, and you say to her, um, "What's wrong? What what happened? What's going on?" And she says, and sing it with me. If you don't know what you've done, there's no point me telling you. What sort of logic is that? <laughs> that's a lot like saying, if you're hungry, there's no point me making any dinner. <laughs> it's the same logic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there's occupied people. I, I'm sure they're doing it all for the right reason. Um, where it happens to be. So, your code wrapped up in threads. Your code, just normal code, doing normal things in a thread safe fashion, which is implicit. Put in the event and stuff at the front, and there's some things I think you should use. This is what we put in production, we support it as an example of why I think. There are other options, and if I'd realized, like if at the time there's a thing we're building, uh, well, sorry, there's a thing, group of people building, but uh, so some of them are uh, the Rubidius team, called Puma. Pronounced, pronounced Puma, or however else you pronounce it. And uh, I don't know in America. I'm not sure what the right way is anymore. I love the Queen. God bless the Queen. And <laughs> and uh, for what it is, essentially, is a fork of mongrel. So mongrel, that threaded thing, mongrel hasn't been touched since mid last year. But as a code base, um, it's it's a great place to start. So basically, they've pulled it out of the dustbin, given it a new name, coat of paint, fixed it, changed the readme, and making it work as as a uh, multi-threaded um, app stack which we've never needed before because we never had a multi-thread um, normal Ruby, but now we do work. So they're building that. And I think they're going to put some other cool stuff in it, like uh, that sort of event in business. And really, so this is it. So if you wondered what the point was, and it's eluded you because of my subtlety, <laughs> this is the, that's the last slide. I have one more slide because I felt that you deserved it. It's a long conference, and I felt you needed one more cow. <laughs> Thank you very much. I didn't leave a lot of room for questions. I don't want any. Let's talk about this thread thing. What would you like to talk about? Threads are awesome. We should use them more often. Does anyone remember? Oh, sorry, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Standard comedy class you took a few years back helped you with your presentation. <laughs> so I, uh, off the topic. Uh, so I tried. It's hard to test out comedy hard. There's nothing harder than, than standing up and having no point to being there except tell jokes. <laughs> like, everything you say may as well be funny, or you may as well have not said it. Um, and at the same time, the audience is looking at you going, ha ha, make me laugh. <laughs> Uh, you don't have those same high expectations, it's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys are champs, thank you very much.